guys, welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 28. This is the very first part of the lesson, so let's get started. So look right up here at my big old one. Remember that one can also be shown by a fraction where your numerator and the denominator are the same. So I have here four squared divided by four squared. That's the same thing, so that also equals one. Well, I can move that four squared, remember, from the bottom to the top by flipping it and changing the sign of my exponent. So if I make this um, one over four squared, flip it up to the numerator and make it four negative two, I can bring that up. So this becomes, I'm flipping everything. So I'm multiplying now and it's four negative two instead of one over four squared. It's four negative two. Well, I know that when I am multiplying and I have the same base, all I do is add my exponents. So I have two plus negative two. Well, two minus two is zero. So this equals four zero. Now, if we go all the way back, four to the zero power is equal to one. Well, that's very interesting. So this provides us with a rule that any time you have something to the zero power, it equals one. So I show that rule by saying that x, representing any number or variable, to the zero power is equal to one. Okay? So I can use that rule to simplify. Here I have x squared y5 y negative two x negative two. I'm going to combine my like bases by adding their exponents. So I have here x2 plus x negative 2. I add 2 plus negative 2, that gives me 0. So that's x to the 0 power, which is a 1. So I have 1 representing my x. Okay? Then my y, I have 5 plus a negative 2, that's equal to 3. So I have 1 y, three. Now I know that anything times one equals itself. So the one is not necessary in my um, expression. So I can simplify it to just y, three. So I basically canceled out my x's, it became one. One times y, three is y, three. Okay, I'm gonna change markers because it's really hard to see the green. Okay m5 b squared m b negative 2. I'm going to combine my like bases by adding their exponents. So I have 5. Remember, anytime you don't see an exponent, that means 1. So 5 plus 1 is 6. So I have, so far, m6. Then 2 plus negative 2 is 0, which means it's a 1. And 1 times m6 is just going to be m6. So I'm left with my B is canceled out, just M6. All right, here I have parentheses. See them here? So that means I need to use my distributive property, okay? Notice I have a minus sign right here separating each term inside my parentheses. So I'm going to first multiply X5, Y0Z times E negative 3, Z0. Now this is interesting. I know that z0 is 1, so I can cancel that out. I also know that y0 is 1, so I can cancel that out. And that gives me a little bit less to work with, makes it a little easier. So I'm going to start with x5 yz times p negative 3. Well, this doesn't have anything that's the same. They don't have any same bases, so I just have to multiply them all together. x5 z, p, negative 3. Okay, it's all multiplied together. Now I have x5, z times negative 4, x5, z1. Well, my negative 4 is not going to change, so that's going to stay in front. x5 plus negative 5, 0, so it cancels out my x. So I'm not going to bring my x here. z times z, negative 1, well, remember, this is a 1, and that's a negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 
is zero. So again, my z is canceled out. So everything got canceled, all I was left with is that negative four. So this whole expression simplifies to x5, z, p negative three, minus four. If you are curious how I got that, if you didn't stay with me, rewind the video, watch that again, um, study carefully example 28.2 in your book, okay? So you can try to get that if you didn't get it. We're gonna do another one that's similar. Here I have x negative two, y negative two, times, here's my parentheses, x squared y squared plus 4x, 4y, 2. Let's start with the first one. x negative 2, y 2. Negative 2 plus 2, sorry, x negative 2 plus times x positive 2. So negative 2 plus a positive 2, that's a 0, so that's represented by a 1. Negative 2 plus positive 2, again, is a 0, so that's represented by a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Now I can't just get rid of it because there's nothing else here. There's nothing else to multiply that one by. So I have to keep the one there and add it to my next term. So I can't just get rid of it. That would make it a zero. There's nothing else to multiply it by, so my one stays. Now I have x negative two times x positive four. Negative two plus positive four, that's a positive two. I'm going to go ahead and bring my 4 down here. Nothing's going to change with that, so it stays there as my 4. Now I multiply my y negative 2 times y positive 2. Negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0, so that makes my y a 1. Well, 1 times 4 is 4, so it just cancels out, stays there, okay? So I have 1 plus 4x squared. If you have any doubts about how I did this, if you need more help with it, please let me know. To me, it's really simple. To me, it's really straightforward. But this is something that I've been practicing for a long time. So sometimes what seems easy to me is just easy because I've done it for a long while. And maybe it wasn't when I first did it, and I just don't remember that. So please let me know if you are confused, if you need any help. All right, and then let's look right here. We're going to simplify. 2, 0, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0. Well, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Ooh, but be careful here. This is the opposite of 2 to the 0 power. So here, your negative kind of is outside of your 2 to the 0 power. 2 to the 0 power is 1, and the opposite of 1 is negative 1. But here, it's protected by parentheses. So this is negative 2 to the 0 power, so this is just 1. Okay, you have to remember that about your negatives and parentheses. Okay, let's very quickly go to our next part. Okay, welcome to the last part of our lesson for today. I'm going to go quickly through this because this really is just review for you guys. So first of all, remember that we've looked at uh, this kind of equation, f meaning fraction times of equals is? Well, this is the same one, just with decimals. So d times of equals is. So we just plug that in to our decimal problem. So if I see 0.32 of what number is 24.32? Well, I just have to plug each piece into this formula. My decimal is 0.32. My of number is what's missing. Of what number? So I'm going to represent that by an n. So I have 0.32 times n equals, here's my is number, 24.32. So to solve for n, I divide both sides by 0.32. And when I do the math, n equals, uh, let's see, 76. Okay, I didn't want to actually do the math for you on the board for time's sake because I know that you guys probably want a shorter lesson, so we're going for it. All right, so n equals 76. Go ahead on your own and look at example 28.6 and 
28.7 to be sure that you're familiar with this. All right, and then volume conversions. With volume, remember, you're looking at cubic dimensions. Oops, the arrow didn't show up. Because you have length, you have width, and you have height. So that's three dimensions that you're talking about. So your units are always cubed. That means when you convert from each unit, from one unit to the next, you have to use three unit multipliers for each step, for each change of unit. So here I want to go from 800 centimeters cubed to feet cubed. So to do that, I start with my 800 centimeters cubed. I can't go straight from centimeters to feet. I don't have a conversion for that. But I do know centimeters to inches, and I can do inches to feet. So for each one of those centimeters, I have to get rid of that unit. So I'm going from centimeters to inches, from centimeters. I have to do this three times. Three unit multipliers for each unit, okay? So from centimeters to inches, I need three unit multipliers. Well, now I'm going from inches to feet. So again, I need three unit multipliers to get rid of all three of my inches. Now, I don't have enough space to do this all in one line, so I'm gonna drop it down to this one. Okay, so I have one unit multiplier of feet to inches, now I have two, now I have three. Okay? So now I'm gonna fill in my numbers. From centimeters to inches, I have 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So I'm gonna repeat that for each one. Then I have my feet to inches. Well, I know that I have 12 inches in one foot. So I will repeat that in each one, okay? So that gets rid of my three centimeters. Then that gets rid of my three inches. And the only units I'm left with will be three feet. Now you don't actually have to do the math on this. Woohoo! happy days. You can leave it like this. So 800 times one times one times one times one times one times one is just 800 on the top. Whoops, did not mean to make that into a smiley face. 800, okay? Then on the bottom, I have 2.54 times 2.54 times 2.54. So really, that's 2.54 cubed. Then I have 12 times 12 times 12, so really that's 12 cubed. And then my unit is feet cubed. Okay? And you can leave it just like that without doing the math. Okay? All right. Go ahead and pause now to do your practice. Okay, you should be back from your practice now. Sorry, I messed up my board. There we go. Okay. So you should be back from your practice now. Letter A, you should have gotten 1.33. Letter B, 3.01. Letter C, 3.84. Letter D, 1. Letter E, negative 1, because your negative was not protected by parentheses. Letter uh, F should be 1, because it is protected by parentheses. Letter G, all of that is raised to 0, so it's 1. And then on the bottom, you should have 42 over 2.54 cubed times 12 cubed feet cubed. And that's all that you have to do for this lesson. Have a wonderful day, guys. Love you so much. Bye.